there's a difference between genetic and genealogical ancestry. We tend to conflate them and think that they're the same thing in our current moment, um, but that's that's not the right way to think about it. The reality is that that genetic ancestry is really, really weird. It doesn't work the way you think. I'm going to show you that in this example here. This is kind of a surprising example I'll give you about genetic ghosts. Um, but um, in contrast, genealogical ancestry is an ordinary understanding of, of ancestry. So what is genetic ancestry? Genetic ancestry, you're a genetic um, ancestor of someone if they get, by direct descent, pieces of DNA from you. You follow me? However, um, you're not their ancestor, their genetic ancestor, if they don't get DNA from you. Now, on the other hand, they're your ancestors, or you're their ancestor, or they're, you're, they're your ancestors if you arise by genealogical descent from them, like a chain of reproductive acts. So think about it this way. So you have a parents, right? They're your ancestors. They're both your genealogical ancestors because you both arise. I mean, I'm talking about your biological parents. You may not even know who they are, but everyone has two biological parents for the most part, right? <laughs> who knows with modern technology, there might be some boundary cases, but you get the basic idea. <laughs> um, we have two parents, even though we don't know who they are. Um, they're both 100% your genealogical ancestors, right? But they're only 50% your genetic ancestors. And why is that? Because only 50% of your DNA comes from your mom. It's a little bit more on average from your mom than from your dad, and 50% from your dad, okay? Now, you have grandparents now, too, right? Grandparents, and you can see that here, too. So this is you. You have 100% of your genome, and this is your mom and your dad. You get 50% here, that's why it's gray. It's like a 50% gray. And then these are your grandparents right here. You see that? And so you got about a quarter percent from each one of them. It's not exactly a quarter percent because there's a little bit of stochasticity and you know you kind of inherit, inherit DNA in big chunks. Not, um, it's, not, it's like a discrete problem. It's not actually continuous. <laughs> and that actually becomes important in this. Um, and then you know, your great grandparents, there's eight of them. And it's about, about eighth of your DNA you get from each one of them, right? You can kind of go back and back, and so, and this is like simulating, you know, the autosomal part of the human genome here. You go back fairly recently, going to back maybe about five or six generations back, and there starts to be these people that appear that are green. And so I just colored them differently, because these are people that are really your genealogical ancestors. You arise by a direct chain of ancestry from them, you following me? But you get zero DNA from them. Not nearly zero, literally zero. <laughs> Precisely zero, because remember DNA is inherited in chunks. Isn't that cool? <laughs> That's really, really recent. <laughs> and what's crazy here is that this isn't like the exception. You go back about 10 generations, this is just about 300 years. The majority of your ancestors give you no DNA. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> This is like one of the most non-intuitive things in biology that I, I remember, I mean, I've presented this to biologists many times, and um, population geneticists who are experts in this space, they all kind of talk about this, like, yeah, this is just common knowledge. Of course that's true, because they've thought about this a lot. But I'll tell you, the vast majority of biologists you talk to, this is kind of like one of those specialized areas where it's like well-established, it's very easy to demonstrate and show this. But if you haven't thought about it deeply, it's deeply non-intuitive, right? <laughs> And you'll be surprised. And so there, it's just been really funny to watch at times in this like enjoyable sort of way. I mean, like the double take <laughs> that you get even from biologists in the same way you get from a room of, uh, of, um, of, non, uh, of non-experts too, of just kind of realizing, oh yeah, that's just the weird ways in which genetic ancestry works. <laughs> now, of course, the Bible doesn't know anything about the weirdness of DNA. They didn't know what DNA was back then, right? <laughs> They had a general sense of biological inheritance, but they had no idea how it was formed. I mean, DNA was only discovered, you know, less than 150 years ago, right? You know, around 100 years ago, depending on how you count it. And we only figured out the structure, like, maybe about 60 years ago. And, you know, it's come to really define modern biology, but it's a very recent thing. And so when they're writing about, or like anyone, even if they use the word genetic, which at times have had meant something different within the theological context, they were never really meaning to say that the Christian teaching is that Adam and Eve are our genetic ancestors, right? Merely that they would be our universal ancestors, that all of us descend from them. So that was like one surprising thing that people didn't know about. <laughs> uh, there's more to it, too. It turns out that the way how gen genealogical ancestry works is very different than genetic ancestry. Like our first genetic common ancestors arise, you know, 
fairly early, like, you know, over 100,000 years ago. That's a, this is a long time ago. Our most uh, common, I mean, our common um, and most recent genealogical ancestors of everyone alive today arise really recently. Like, some estimates say that around 2,000 years ago is when the most recent people are that are ancestors of everyone in this room, for example. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> It's just not the ancestry that's being traced with DNA. Um, it, it's, if you consider all the connections, including the ones that are not covered by DNA, then you start to find out that we actually become, we get those universal ancestors really just very quickly, just in a couple thousand years. And moreover, um, actually, if you go back just a little bit farther than that, the majority of people across the globe, like maybe 3,000 years ago, the majority of people across the globe 3,000 years ago are ancestors of everyone alive today. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so this is no longer um, like, you know, this thing of like, oh man, like, you know, you gotta figure out exactly where Adam Eve or common ancestors is a hard thing to do. It turns out it's actually just becomes out impossible. It might require miracles for Adam and Eve not to be the ancestor of everyone. 